right, the polls are open in Pennsylvania for a half hour now. Both campaigns holding closing rallies in that battleground state last night. We have CNN's Miguel Marquez live from Pittsburgh with more what a battle that state is expected to be. What's the action? Yeah, we're actually just south of Pittsburgh in North Strawbane uh, in, the, in Washington County. Uh, this is Trump country, and it looks more like a busy airport uh, this morning than a polling station. This is the township center in North Strawbane. The, the line snakes around that way inside, and then like an airport, it snakes all the way into where they're voting in there. We probably have 150 people. Who do you think he's voting for? I'm not entirely sure. It's a very subtle sort of message he's sending this morning. Uh, but the line snakes all the way back here. There's only six machines in there. So they are getting through there fairly quickly, but it is taking probably a half hour or so. Uh, people very, very motivated. This is a county that Donald Trump must do very, very well in. Uh, it's a place where Hillary Clinton actually has an office. Romney beat Obama in 2012 here. Clinton wants to be somewhat competitive here. Trump needs to be very competitive uh, in these counties. He needs to win them huge, and he also needs to stay up with Hillary Clinton in those urban areas. Polls just open at 7. No early vote voting here. They close 8 p.m. We will know the winner then. Allison. Okay, Miguel, thanks so much for that. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton barnstorming key states in the final hours last night. So which states does each candidate need to win to reach that magical 270 number? CNN political analyst David Gregory is here to break down the numbers. David, what are you seeing? Well, a couple things to look at. First of all, where did they end their final rallies? It tells us something about what they're thinking. For Hillary Clinton, who, remember, is already on our map at 268. So she's very close to getting to that magic number. She ended her night in Pennsylvania. Why? That's really a file wall for her. If she can shut Trump down there, she really doesn't need some of these other swing states that we're talking about. If she can hold there, that's a key part of that blue wall and prevents him from building that momentum in the Midwest. It's important. She's also spending time in, uh, in North Carolina. You've got that surge of Latino voting, highest percentage increase of Latino voters in North Carolina. Back in Philadelphia, it's minority votes. It's also college-educated whites, which we'll is talk a little bit more about in just a moment. For Donald Trump, look where he ended in Michigan. Why? He thinks working class white voters and a surge of those voters could surprise people and give him a path to victory and might say something about his ability to dominate this region overall. He may need that as insurance if he can't pick up all these other swing states as well as holding the Romney states that you go back to 2012 and look at. A couple of things that we'll look for in a couple of states that I think are interesting. If, uh, if we go to the map, let's go to our national map. And let's go to Florida. As these returns come in and you're coming home from work and you start to watch county by county, there's a couple of things to look at. What are we talking about in the surge potentially of Hispanic voters? This plays so big in a state like Florida. You're going to look at Miami, Miami-Dade County. This is huge. Why? Look at the margins in 2012, 62 to 38 for Barack Obama. You're going to look to see if Hillary Clinton is performing at that level, maybe even overperforming uh, when you look at that. If we go back, we're still in Florida. We look in the Orlando area. That's Orange County. Similar situation. A lot of Central American voters, Puerto Ricans who have moved to Florida, they could be part of that Latino surge. Again, you look at the margins in 2012 for Barack Obama, 59 to 40. That's huge. You're going to look for similar numbers. I won't show it on the map. We're running short on time. Pennsylvania is one where you talk about Chester County, one of those collar counties in Pennsylvania, narrowly won actually by uh, Mitt Romney in 2012. That's going to be a sign as we look at Chester County. I could think about it and it shows up. 50 to 49 for Romney. This is a Republican area. If Donald Trump can't win here, that portends a difficult time for him to win a state like Pennsylvania. We look for that as the polls close tonight. That's how at one you are with the magic wall. I feel it. I you really now just think it. Dude. Telekinesis. Impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much. So where does the race stand today on Election Day? Michael Smirconish is the host of CNN's Smirconish. He's a CNN political commentator and the host of the Michael Smirconish program on Sirius XM. Michael, can you believe we're here today? Also, remember I'm where thrilled. you are, Michael. Remind people why we call you Mr. Pennsylvania. Uh, listen, my wife voted in those Philadelphia Sweet. suburbs at 10 minutes to 7. She was in line. It was already 50 to 70 deep. I'm usually in that line first, and it's 10 deep, so the interest is tremendous, as you might expect. Okay, so what, do, what strikes you today? I mean, let's start with their closing arguments. What do you think is going to win the day? 
I thought what was interesting in terms of how they wrapped up last night was they both had these enormous crowds, so the enthusiasm is there. When I look at Donald Trump, I see someone who's relying mostly on an organic effort. I know that Sean Spicer disagrees with me when I say that I think that the, the Democratic field operation, the metrics and their ability to bring out people that they've already identified is superior to that which the GOP has assembled. What the Republicans say they have going for them is something that we can't measure in these polls. That people are going to come out today to reject the status quo, to reject the media, to reject all office holders, and to support Donald Trump. So it's sort of old school and new school in terms of how they're driving the vote. There's so much data to try and digest. I come back to one data point that I've shared with the two of you time and again, and it's this. George Herbert Walker Bush in 1988 got 59 percent of the white vote it earned him 426 electoral votes Mitt Romney in 2012 the exact same percentage of the white vote only 206 electoral votes mm -hmm. the takeaway it is a different country and so all the information that you've been sharing about Hispanic voters coming out in record proportions I think thus far potentially is the story of the cycle well we have the same thing with Reagan right he won uh, the uh, uncollege educated uh, white voter by the same margin that Trump is predicted to and he got 59 percent of the vote Trump's looking at somewhere in the 40s so the complexion of the country has changed who makes the better adjustment probably wins when you look at the map as people are coming home and hearing about exits and seeing different things which states are you watching most closely and why so we're tuned in it's you know it's CNN tonight 7 p.m. If, if not sooner and there's gonna be a lot of data that's going to come soon because many things are gonna pop on the East Coast you're gonna look at Florida you're going to look at North Carolina you're going to I'm mean, working up the eastern seaboard M maybe you spend some time on Virginia but it's really then Pennsylvania and New Hampshire and I don't know how long it will take them to count those votes but there will be indications relatively soon in terms of of how the night is breaking and if those if if he has not if he, if he has not pulled something from Hillary Clinton in one of those states then I think he's going to have a very difficult climb but what if he has what if Donald Trump has won North Carolina and Florida and Florida in then, the, or on the East Coast and then, then what get happens? the popcorn get the popcorn because we need to focus then on the Midwest we need to know what happens in Michigan hey I remember being in this bureau on primary election night in Michigan and Bernie shocked the world everybody keeps wondering why all this attention why did he go to Michigan why did she go to Michigan people have forgotten because Bernie Sanders delivered a thunderclap back in primary and caucus season so that's kind of a crapshoot and then you shift of course further west and you wonder about Arizona and you wonder about Nevada and you wonder what Evan McMullen really is doing in Utah so if, if the if the mysteries are not solved on the eastern seaboard then we're gonna be here for a while and why are there more mysteries I mean, I think that takes us to the unprecedented negativity and disaffection in this election. I started calling it a rejection formation. Donald Trump is saying to blue-collar Americans, I'm going to fight for you. They may look at him to a certain degree and say, you ain't us. Hillary Clinton has her own coalition, but really it's the Obama coalition and trying to get some of Bernie's farther to the left. And she's saying, I'm going to take care of you. And they're looking at her and they say, no, you're not. You don't represent what we want. So who gets less of that winds up being your winner? You know, I'd say it differently, and I totally agree, Chris, with what you're saying. It, politics makes strange bedfellows, never more so than in this election, because you need to look well beyond. It's misleading just to see how many early ballots have been returned by Republicans and how many have been returned by Democrats. The demographics matter, race matters, ethnicity matters, education matters, and gender matters. You need more data than just to look at R's and D's. So if there's record turnout tonight, what do you think that means? I mean, is that a silver lining that people have been engaged or does that just show anger maybe they're just you know I just I just had this conversation with my wife I said do you think that they're lined up because they want to make sure it's really over <laughs> or is it that they're so enthused because look you know what the numbers are they may complain about it but they're watching us they're paying attention they're following CNN I think they're into it but eager for it to be over mm. fair enough Michael Smirconish thanks so much great to talk to you, you on guys. this election day Early voting has certainly given us insights, uh, increasingly so, Latinos especially. Um, Record-breaking numbers in early voting, especially in Florida. Florida's going to have well over 50% turnout before we even count what happens today. Unheard of. So, 
What is that vote going to mean? All right, we're going to talk about that. All right, and if you want a chance to be featured on CNN's Election Day coverage, tag your voting Instagrams with hashtag MyVote. Let us know who you voted for and where you voted, and we'll be showing some of them throughout the day. How about a little CNN. taste now? What do we have? We have some live pictures from Parma, Ohio. That's just as good. How about that? Oh, here, we go. here we go. Look at that, USA, all the way. That's nice. A little voter sticker there on the way to the gym. Respect it. Aww. America's Choice 2016 is brought to you by the well-equipped 2017 Mitsubishi Outlander.